everybody's talking about state trees, the new tool in Unreal Engine that's allowing developers to implement AI in a new way. The question I had was, are state trees any better than behavior trees, blueprints, or state machines? So I spent the last few weeks studying them and there are some glaring issues, but overall they're wonderful. Studying them did make one very important thing apparent to me and that's welcome and shout out to everyone who encouraged me to check out state trees i'm gonna finish that thought later in this video but first we need to understand what this tool is so what are state trees well epic defines state trees as a general purpose hierarchical state machine that combines selectors from behavior trees and states and transitions from state machines. So all that means is if behavior trees and state machines had a baby, this would be it. They took the best of both worlds and combined them into a new creation. Big shout Tucker energy without the nefarious activity, right? But the more important thing is the goal of this tool or the purpose it serves. It was created to be a highly performant, flexible and organized way of implementing your designs. If this is true, the ideal use case for a state tree in your game would be complex AI systems. But how well does the current version of state trees accomplish this? I'm using Unreal Engine 5.2, so let's start there. Now this is just my opinion, but I think they got two out of three easily. Now let's start with organization because that's where I think state trees excel the most. They did a lot to make the process of building a state tree feel more centralized. Visually, the tree structure is great. It gives you a lot of useful information at a glance. and It's easy to tell where the transitions lead. The question mark symbol is used in multiple places, so it'd be nice if that had one meaning, but that's just me nitpicking. I also found the setup much cleaner. All you have to do is enable state tree plugins then add state tree as a component in the blueprint you're using and you're ready to go. That's it. There's now a very clear indication of what tree is controlling the actor in that actor's blueprint. One of the biggest game changers I found in state trees is just the way they handle data. It's literally so simple to keep data in sync. You can now bind a variable in the state tree with a variable in the blueprint actor and then they just update automatically. No more setting values in multiple places and updating them in multiple places like you had to do with blackboards and behavior trees. You can also create global tasks that allow you to always have some data accessible for state selection. So for me, all this amounts to an implementation that feels very organized and pleasant to work with. But what good is organization if it's not flexible? I'd say state trees nail flexibility too. It's very simple to expand and grow your state trees. Since they're just state machines, Epic says you can use them for more than just AI. I haven't tested that out, that's just what they say. And some users on Reddit were able to use one state tree to control multiple types of enemies, which if that's simple and easy to do, that's, that's exciting. And <laughs> I plan on trying that very soon. But as for performance, there's just not enough information out there to know or tell, in my opinion. Most state tree tasks I created had to run on a tick function. Generally, I try to stay away from tick functions and tick events because depending on what you're doing, they can get expensive. But there's a rumor that Epic is doing some magic to make tick functions very efficient when they're in state trees. And these are just rumors. There's no conclusive evidence of that. So performance is the mark I'm not sure that they've hit. So with that information in mind, if I were building a complex AI, I would probably use a state tree, but before you make that decision, there's more information that you should know. We've talked about the highs of state trees, now let's talk about the lows. These things are experimental and buggy. And as of version 5.2, I just can't recommend using them in a big game that you're planning on shipping yet. Some people are doing it, I just can't recommend it. Engine crashes were the biggest issue I encountered and these crashes weren't always grateful. I would create some states in a state tree but I would miss something like a transition or I'd forget to set a variable I was passing into a state. So when I ran the project the engine would just crash. Normally when a file won't compile and I go to hit the play button the engine gives me a warning but I guess that's just not implemented in the version that I'm using. So I restarted the engine but when I tried to open the state tree, it crashed again. So I restarted the engine again and it let me open the state tree, but all my transitions were messed up. Fixing the transitions wasn't a huge deal because the tree was small, 
but I still lost a decent amount of work because the engine just kept crashing. Now debugging this issue was not easy because there's not much to debug with yet. So the primary method of debugging is print statements on the screen, which is enough to be helpful, but still leaves a lot to be desired. Thankfully, there's a debug tool on Epic's roadmap that will come out eventually. State trees definitely require an intermediate level of skill just because of all the debugging you have to do and the lack of support for them currently. The learning curve is steep at the beginning, but after you figured out what's going on, they're, they're pretty easy to pick up. I was able to figure out how to use state trees without watching tutorials, but I still don't think it was that intuitive. For example, the transition options are really nice, but it was not clear to me that some of these are associated with completion nodes. I don't know, maybe I just missed that. Now this one was really frustrating because it was such a great feature. In a state tree, you can trigger transitions based on events. I think this is a great feature because in behavior trees, sometimes I struggle to do the same thing because of prioritization hierarchy, but that's besides the point. It's very simple to make this work. In fact, all you need is this one node in your actor's blueprint when you wanna trigger that state transition. But because this node is absent from any of the documentation that's currently out there, it took me a while to figure out how to get this thing to work properly. Now, you don't have to struggle like I did because there's a handful of tutorials by other YouTubers that can be a useful resource for you if you get stuck. So even with these downsides, I'd still say state trees live up to the hype, but what does the community think about them? Well, there's not a ton out there yet, but developers are loving this tool. General chatter is that they're great for complex AI systems, but unnecessary for simple ones. Other developers see huge possibilities when you combine state trees with smart objects. And there's a handful of people that still prefer C++, which is great. So that brings us back to the beginning and the realization I had when I started studying state trees. Years ago, when I first looked up how to make enemy AI, I'm sure I found similar videos to the ones that you find. Really great tutorials on how to use blueprints or behavior trees or state machines to implement your AI. But I missed something very important. Behavior trees, blueprints, state machines, and state trees are all just tools. That's not the actual AI. I've spent too much time focusing on the tools when the bottom line is they're all capable of implementing whatever I wanna design. But if the AI design isn't good, it doesn't matter what tool I use, the AI, the AI will still be bad and the game will suffer because of it. So I think it's time I study AI design. Y'all say data or data? It changes every time for me.